Yeah, really. Um, they have key value pairs, and they can have nested structure. So inside a document, you can have other documents. You can have arrays, just like Perl data structures. You can have hashes of arrays of documents of arrays. Uh, same thing in all your favorite high-level languages. And they look a little bit like JSON. So if you're familiar with JSON, here's an example of a document. This is something that could go right in MongoDB. So this is a document representing a book. It has a title. It has an author. Uh, it has a language. It has a genre, which in this case is an array of two genres. It has this sub-document or uh, uh, embedded hash ref, however you want to think of it, called publication, which has some information about uh, where it's published. And this is, um, this is actually not JSON because it has date types, but this is JavaScript. And uh, if you use the MongoDB shell, which comes with MongoDB, that's actually a complete JavaScript environment. So you can uh, uh, JavaScript REPL. So you can type stuff like this right into the shell and work with it and save it in MongoDB and do queries. Um, if you were to represent this in Perl, it would look almost the same thing, except this, uh, um, instead of the uh, native date type, we use date time or date time tiny. But basically, it's the same idea. So when working with the MongoDB class structure in Perl, we want to get these things called documents. Uh, we get them from a cursor. The cursor has a collection, which is where those documents live. The collection has a database, uh, which again is just a namespace. And that database has a client, which is the thing that actually maintains your socket and connection and so forth. And all of that stuff communicates with your application. So now that we have the necessary background, let's actually build this thing. So this is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to set up a really simple Mojalicious Lite application. So we're going to use MongoDB, and we're going to set up this route that just gets the root level of our, uh, of our web application. And all it does, it doesn't actually do anything with the database yet. It just says, hello, library users. So that's not too interesting. But let's create a page called slash books that'll give us a list of all the books in our library. So the first thing we're going to do is define this sub for uh, the get route to slash books. We're going to create a Mongo client. In this case, I haven't passed any arguments to the constructor, so it's going to connect on the default. It's going to try to connect on the default port on localhost. But if we wanted to connect elsewhere, we could just provide a host and port name in the uh, constructor. Then we're going to ask the client to get our database called library. We're going to, uh, to, uh, then we're going to ask the database to get a collection called books, which is where our actual documents are living. And then we're going to get a cursor. We're going to call the find method on this collection. And again, with no arguments, that just means find everything. If we wanted to restrict this query, we could pass in a query document to the find method. Uh, if, for example, if we wanted to find books by a particular author. And then I'm just going to pass these objects straight to a template. And this is an EPL template which just looks like this. It iterates over that cursor and outputs a line item for each one. So if we actually run this, assuming we had some books in the database, it would look like this. And here are some test books and uh, two different authors, Bob Smith and Jane Doe. So that's all you have to do. Now notice to do all of this, we didn't have to write any SQL or any other query language. We just called methods on these objects. And that's because uh, the way MongoDB works is rather than making you write a query language, uh, it has an object-oriented syntax that just gives you the data back. And since the data fits within the data structures of a programming language, in our case, you know, ha you know what we call documents are really just hashes, uh, which can contain other hashes and arrays, that maps directly to the data structures that you work with every day. So you don't really have to have this intermediary layer of writing SQL, getting results back, uh, in a list and massaging those into objects. You don't have to use an ORM, um, although there are similar things that you can use for MongoDB if you want to. Uh, but it's nice if you're working with a lot of these kind of nested hierarchical data structures, it's nice to have a database that treats all of those as first class instances where you don't have to um, go through the work of coercing that into a relational structure. All right, so that's very simple so far. We've just displayed a list of books. Um, but let's do something more interesting. You might remember from that original book example, I had this genre field in it. And this particular book has two genres, fantasy and adventure. So let's do something with genres. And let's write another Mojalicious route. Uh, in this case, uh, my code sample might be a little too small. 
Uh, but we're going to say, we're going to create a, a route called slash books slash genre, where we can look up all the books in a given genre. The colon before genre there means that's a parameter. So we'll have slash books slash fantasy slash books slash adventure and so forth. And the sub for this is also pretty easy. Uh, we're going to create our new Mongo client. Again, we're going to get our collection. And again, we're going to do a find. And on this time, the find, we're actually going to pass a parameter. And we pass this hash ref, which says genre maps to dollar genre, which is what passed, was passed in, in our uh, URL. So all this is doing is it's saying, find me all the documents in books that have a genre field that matches fantasy or adventure. But you might be saying at this point, Mike, that genre field was an array. It was not a scalar. And that's true. It was an array in our sample book that contained two items. As it happens in MongoDB, if you ask to match an array against a scalar value, that's the equivalent of an in operation. And it'll say, does that value appear in that array? So if it's fantasy, then for the document Lord of the Rings, uh, it will appear in that array. Um, if we just had a single genre, we might do it as an array of a single value, or I might just do it as a single scalar value in the document. It would still work. So again, I'm going to pass all this information to an EPL template. Uh, and we could render that, and that would work. And I don't think I have a screenshot of that. No. All right. I left out the screenshot of that. My apologies. But let's do something uh, even more interesting. So, so far, we've listed all the books. We've listed all the books in a particular genre. Uh, what if we want to add a new book? So we'll create a post handler. And this is just going to allow us to post some information to slash books to create something new. So again, we'll construct our Mongo client. We don't have to do that every time. We could have a Mojalicious helper that just keeps track of the Mongo client. I just did it this way for simplicity. But now let's, uh, we're just going to create a hash ref here. And we're just going to grab information out of the request. So self-param title gives us the title. We get the author. Uh, we get the genre, which again, we're going to put in an array reference. Um, if the user passes multiple genres, then we'd have multiple items in that array. Otherwise, it would just be an array of one, which is fine. We're going to create the publication information as a nested document. Again, just grabbing stuff out of self-param. Uh, for the date, we'll construct a date time object. You could also use date time tiny if you don't want to construct a date time object, because those are expensive. And then we'll just insert it. And all we do to insert is we just call this insert method and pass the hash ref. And that's all we have to do. And all of that information, exactly as it's structured right there, will live in the database. And we can query on that information. We could query on those genres, as we saw. We could query on the publication information, and so on and so forth, because all of this nested structure is a first class object in MongoDB. So that's really all there is to it, to building a simple, straightforward application in MongoDB. Uh, some conclusions. MongoDB is easy to work with. Um, I think this presentation in particular demonstrates that really well. Um, there are no schema definitions. So in working with a relational database, the first thing you have to do is define all your tables uh, and your schema and so forth and so forth. You don't have to do that in MongoDB. You just name a collection and start inserting stuff. Um, so uh, the nice thing about that is that means that documents that exist in the same collection do not have to have the same fields. So for example, uh, you might have a, uh, some books are collaborations between multiple authors, but most books aren't. So you might have a collaboration field in there, which is a Boolean. Instead of setting that to null for 90% of your books, you can just leave it out. Um, if you wanted, you could create a collection where all the documents look nothing alike. And that's probably not a good idea, because that would be a pain to program with. But you could do that if you wanted to. Um, there is no relational modeling. You can do the equivalent of a relational model in MongoDB across many collections if you wanted to. But then you just have to write your own joins. And by that point, you're just writing your own relational database. So it might not be a good idea. Um, the nice thing about MongoDB is that the model matches your code. So you're used to dealing with hashes of hashes and hashes of arrays. That's what goes in the database, and that's what comes out, which makes it really easy to deal with. Perl hashes are basically the same thing as MongoDB documents. And finally, you can let your use case determine your data model, not the other way around. In relational databases, we often design the data model first and then write our program around that. Uh, the nice thing about MongoDB is we can think, well, what do we want this program to do? 
and then we can make the data fit that really easily. So if you're interested in this, and I hope you are, I hope this, uh, this of course is just a very, very, very basic in, uh, introduction. But if you want to learn more, uh, to learn more about MongoDB, check out docs.mongodb.org. Uh, they've, uh, over the past year or so, done a really excellent job updating and uh, expanding the manual. Um, to learn more about the MongoDB Perl driver, that of course is on CPAN. There is a module in there called MongoDB Tutorial, which is a nice pod which contains uh, sort of all the basic CRUD operations and how you do all sorts of queries uh, using Perl. The nice thing about our drivers is the API is fairly consistent across all of them. So if you want to do stuff in Python and Ruby too, it works basically the same way. Uh, you can check out the uh, demo app that I showed you, which is uh, on my GitHub here, uh, mongo-library. Uh, my GitHub name is Frito, as it is pretty much everywhere else. Um, some potential things you might want to do are add functions for editing authors uh, or for editing books instead of just creating them. Uh, there's also a nice CPAN ecosystem around Mongo. Uh, we, instead of having ORMs, we have ODMs for object document map, uh, mappers. Uh, they're a lot simpler than an ORMs because they don't have to do a whole lot. One is Mongoose, which is based on the very successful Mongo mapper from Ruby. This basically takes MongoDB documents and turns them into Moose objects. This allows you to use Moose to do schema validation, uh, so it's not complete chaos. Um, and uh, that's pretty nice. There's also MongoDBI, which is very similar, also uses, um, sets up a DSL, uh, kind of Moose-like syntax for your MongoDB documents. Um, there's also MongoDB async, which tracks the upstream driver but adds uh, Coro and libEV to do asynchronous queries. Um, and uh, you know, that bullet point actually is obsolete because they have done new releases of that. So uh, there wasn't a new release in a couple of years, but it should be now up to date. There's also Mango, which is very cool, uh, written by Sebastian Rydell of Mojalicious. Um, it's designed to fit into Mojalicious uh, really nice. This is a pure Perl MongoDB client. The official driver has lots of uh, C code, access stuff. Uh, this one doesn't. It's in pure Perl. It fits right in with uh, Mojalicious, uh, and it's really cool, asynchronous, non-blocking, and uh, Sebastian, if you've worked with him, you know he's great and uh, works really hard to actively maintain things. So I think I've got like 20 seconds left. Uh, if you've got any questions, come find me. Unfortunately, I have another talk in like 10 minutes in another room. But uh, you can uh, track me down there. And uh, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Let's try this out. Aww. It still says stand by. I don't know. The internet gods may have figured out what I was trying to do.